Hello, we're back with, with hashtag Ask Android. And we'd like to welcome Kenneth Ford and Neto Marin to the next session of the live stream. Now, Kenneth is a developer advocate for Chrome OS, also focused on foldables, while Neto is a regional DA and a LATAM expert based in Brazil. And he's also an expert on Android TV and things like billing and other stuff. Sure. OK, so if you couldn't uh, see from the way that we uh, <laughs> described our guests, we were talking about form factors, which includes things like auto, wear, TV, foldables, uh, Chrome OS. And that is a Great. bunch of topics. Yeah. Um, so so uh, we're going to try to do our best to get your questions. Again, if you have questions, just use the hashtag AskAndroid in uh, either the live stream or on Twitter, and we will uh, try to get to those. So Dan, do you have your first question? Sure, sure. So like, I guess this is a question that's probably in the mind of a lot of developers. But you know, <laughs> why or when should you care about using all these different form factors? Um, so I think when you talk about like Chrome OS and foldables and tablets, it, it really just comes into what kind of experiences can you bring to your mm -hmm. users that are different from on a phone, and if you feel like those are valuable, then that's kind of when you should think about uh, actually targeting these kind of different devices. And, and, and developers actually have a lot of success with apps on Chrome OS, right? I mean, they, you yeah. know, this is you know, like you know, it may not be something you think about, but 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 you know, developers are building whole businesses built on 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 what on what on getting these apps to work really well in these large form factor devices. And, and we see like increased engagement rates and stuff like that uh, because these devices are meant for longer experiences, mm -hmm. more kind of in depth. Uh, usage patterns and, and things like that. Yeah, the same for TV because you need a very specific experience because you're using a remote control, you're not using your fingers to touch and everything. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if you are thinking about on board and, and a TV, and for mm -hmm. example, in some regions TV, the, the house is built around TV, yeah, so that you have the family, the family room, so it's you need a really good experience. Yeah, I, I know people who watch their TV all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have two daughters, yeah. uh, two small daughters. Some and, people out there might be, you know, watching <laughs> the TV. Right. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, another question that we get a lot is, do you need a separate APK for different form factors? Yeah. So for things like uh, mobile phones, foldables, Chrome OS, and these kind of Android-based desktop environments, uh, it's all the same APK. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have more information on the TV APKs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, in TV you have two options. If you are using app bundles, you can have just the same APK with the bundles because not really, it's not actually an APK, right? It's mm -hmm. the bundle that the yeah. Play Store will deliver. It. But if you don't, if you are not using uh, the app bundle, then you you need a, a different APK. And a good thing to measure is that the version number must be always higher than the mobile version number because instead of that, if you update your mobile with the higher version number, the TV will get this mobile version. It can mess up with your application. So. Yes, so you need the multiple APKs if you're not using bundle and a higher version number for TV. Right, the best answer is just use the app bundle. Yeah. <laughs> well, Please. Please. well, about that, like a lot of most Chrome OS devices are x86 architecture, right. um, and and they're different densities a lot of times than most phones. So app bundles really allows you to ship like a substantially smaller APK, uh, specifically for using native code. Okay, cool. So. Yeah. Yeah, Use app bundles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same for TV because you have 4K, Full HD, you have different resources, and they are big in this case, mm -hmm. right? So. And app bundles just sort of takes yeah. care of yeah. all that complexity Please, for you. Bundle, so. exactly. yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So one of the questions that came in from the Twitter stream is, uh, and this is, this, I don't know if we can really answer this, but it's <laughs> kind of a fun question. So why, so why does Android TV have the model view presenter pattern in lean back? And is there any you know, way to upgrade it? Is it really hard to design for things like MVVM? Yeah, yeah. It's because the, the way we have on MTV, because it's like it's a simplified pattern, if you think about for it, for presenting media content. Because the mm -hmm. Android TV apps, they are more focused on around Media, con media content. Mm -hmm. So when you have the model like, where you go get your information about the stream, then you have the view that mm -hmm. is specifically mm -hmm. about how you display this on TV. And the presenter is because you taking care about the media transmitter, the, the, um, the stream, etc. So in this mm -hmm. case, we thought that it's an easier way to start doing Android app, Android TV apps. Mm -hmm. But yes, we are continuously working our libraries and probably going to have something in the future updating according to the community feedback. And if yeah. you have a feedback, send to us. <laughs> and it, uh, yeah, because this is important to know how developers are using and what their demands. This is how, we, for example, architecture components was born, right? Yeah, so exactly. You heard the feedback. So uh, I mean, you just mentioned if you have feedback, send it to us. What is the way that you like getting feedback? We have the Android Dev uh, Twitter handle. We yeah. have the we can send one of the DA, so at Neto Marine, but you also can send you our. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, you can send some, some. There is a bug, a bug, tra bug yeah. tracker, so you can open an issue there and, and put your feedback there. Okay, so Twitter cool. uh, handle and bug tracker are good yeah. ways to, to get yeah. some face And if it's something with the samples, you yeah, always GitHub. can use the GitHub yeah. issues I was, to, I was to register say, that. 
cool. Yeah. Oh. Send us PRs. Okay. Uh, so Avi12641 uh, asks, um, what is the best way, uh, best and easiest way to optimize the app for all screen sizes? Um, so I think a lot of that really just comes down to uh, building out different layouts uh, mm -hmm. and having kind of finding ways of taking advantage of, of the different screen sizes. So uh, making sure you have layout files for kind of all the different uh, screen sizes that you feel like your product should, should change at. Um, and then really caring about uh, the larger screen you generally get to, the more landscape first it is. Uh, so just thinking about kind of not only how your uh, layouts work in portrait, uh, but also kind of testing landscape uh, and rotation changes and, and things like that. Is there any recommendation around like art assets and things like that as you're dealing with larger screens? Um, you should think about kind of not only like the screen size, but maybe how far away the person is going to be from mm -hmm. the display. So on a phone, it's it's usually really close. For on a, a laptop or something, you're a little bit further away. Uh, so just thinking about maybe you should scale these assets up, provide bigger assets, um, and just kind of making that really comes down to testing on these different devices. Because that's really where you'll see for your product and your app, uh, kind of what kind of breaks down. And also think about the navigation, right? Also yeah. on TV and this kind of device. Sometimes, even though you are using it on a laptop, you don't you don't want to touch. For example, you are using the keyboard or mm -hmm. the, some navigation. Yeah. So pay attention to navigation is also very important, and for TV is even more important because people are using again using remote, using other ways to control that. We talked a little bit about this in our session too, of like bottom nav bar kind of breaks down as you get to wider screens, and so thinking about how you can pull that out to uh, a left side nav or, or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, just to give people a uh, more intuitive experience that they're used to on these kind of devices. So you mentioned your session. Do you want to give Senator some key points that you went over in the session, or maybe why folks should watch if they haven't <laughs> watched it already? Um, so the. <laughs> Really, the thing we drilled uh, in our entire session is just handling configuration changes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really run away from them anymore. You can't really just lock to portrait and, and kind of move on and not worry about saving state and things like that. Uh, if there's one key point that we can kind of take away from, from that talk is uh, handle configuration changes. And we talk mm -hmm. a lot about mm -hmm. kind of what configuration changes you, you'll see, whether it's uh, folding or unfolding a device, uh, resizing it, and things like that. Um, so if you kind of want more information on what to look for, uh, we talk quite a bit about that uh, in our yeah. session. And I was going to say, and also the speed of handling co configuration changes yeah. becomes really important, especially when you're on a Chrome OS device and, you, and people are trying to resize the window. Do you want to answer, ask that one? Does that sound? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so Adrian asks, uh, should the multiple form factors be used uh, to continue a user's experience or as a standalone experience independent of each other? I think it depends on what form factors you're talking about, yeah. right? So I think TV is probably a pretty separate experience. Yeah, totally, totally different. Like, again, repeating, yeah. uh, you were using remote, or sometimes you're using the Google Assistant mm -hmm. to ask for something. So the experience is totally different. And something that we talk about in our session, too, is just from a desktop to a phone or foldable. Uh, in that world, it should be the same kind of experience. But think about how you can surface uh, more options and things like that for specific contexts. All right, well, I think that's all the time we have. So thanks, Kenneth and Neto, for all your form factor <laughs> insights. And thank you, Android community, for submitting great questions. Make sure to check out our guide on developer.android.com for more about targeting your app to different form factors. And of course, catch the rebroadcast of their talk. <laughs>